Today I'm going to uh, show you how to use Photoshop for artists. We are going to uh, edit our photos that we've taken of our artwork to, in order to keep track and to log our artwork is so we know where it's going and so that we have high resolution images for, um, that we can edit later on and for low resolution images for our website and social media. So um, I'm going to uh, turn off my video now I'm going to start this up now. Okay, here we go. So I am in Photoshop, um, Photoshop Elements. I do not need the full Photoshop. I have found that Photoshop, Photoshop Elements does whatever I need. Um, I've never had an issue with it. So uh, I do not have a new one. I understand that the new one has a lot more gadgets and filters and things. Um, depending on what you want to use it for, you may want that one. Um, if you're going to buy it, you have to buy the latest one, but the one I have works just fine. So this is the screen here. Uh, there are a lot of windows that you can open. Uh, you can click on this for layers and things. We don't need this for what we're going to do today. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have a file on my computer. Now, I do not use the Photoshop photo album book. I use Windows. I'm a Windows girl. I have a PC and I just make folders within Windows for my uh, different artwork. So I have several folders. I have one, this one that you're seeing now, which is called camera. And when I download my photos from my camera and I use my good um, digital camera on a tripod to take photos of my artwork, you can't, no matter how much you think you can, you cannot stand still long enough to take a good photo. So I use my tripod and those photos from the camera go straight into this folder, which is called camera because it makes sense. And that's how I know what, where it's going to be. I have another folder, uh, which I call working artist slideshow. You can call it whatever you want, but this is where my high resolution folder, uh, high, re high resolution see if I can say this again, high resolution photos go. Okay. Then I have another one called slides, which are my low resolution images. And in this one, I put the title of the painting plus the size. Now you will notice that there is a hyphen between every word that Photoshop puts in the title of the painting. This is for a reason. This is for the Google algorithms. So uh, when you post these on your website or whatever, um, you need these hyphens in order for Google to find your photos. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go into my camera folder and I'm going to pick a random painting that was taken uh, on my easel. As soon as I'm done painting, I take a photo and let's do this one. Why not? Nope. Let's do this one. I, I find that usually I take three photos and um, sometimes I change the painting a little bit in between. So I know that the last photo I took um, is probably the best one. So I'm going to open with my Photoshop Elements Editor. <clears throat> okay. And this comes up. So this is a photo of the painting uh, taken right after I finished painting it. It's still wet. I've just signed it. Um, like five minutes ago, not even that. It's taken on my easel. It's not perfectly square um, because it depends how I'm standing. I try and do as good a job as I can, but my floor is not completely level and you know, stuff happens, right? So we're going to go into uh, over here on the left, the select button, and we're going to put a square around this. Okay. Then we're going to go up here to image and transform and skew. What this does is this puts a little button on each corner and then we can drag the painting each corner independently until we get a square image. Now, I don't know if you can see or not um, how obvious I am, but if you can see the dotted lines along the screen here, I'm trying to do it so that I have the same distance at the top and the bottom along that dotted line and that will help me tell if it's square or not. Sometimes it's not perfect. Sometimes you need to adjust it a little bit. Uh, after a while you get pretty good at it. <clears throat> okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to click the check mark. Okay, so this is we're going to find out if we've taken, if we've squared it up good enough, well enough, good enough, well enough, well enough. Um, my mother done taught me how to spoke. 
Okay, so I'm going into my crop tool here down on the left hand side. Oops, there we go. And sometimes it jumps into its own crop thing and sometimes you can drag it. Um, and I'm going to move it over and get it as close as I can to the edge. This is how we're going to see if we've made it square enough. And I can already tell by looking at this that I have not. And that you can see on the bottom right hand corner here how I've dragged this corner over too much. Um, so I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to go back into my select tool and I'm going to make another um, outline and I'm going to go back to my image transform and skew and I'm going to pull this in a little bit because it was a little bit farther out. Are you going to move? There we go. All right. Don't worry if the dimensions of the actual um, image change from square or whatever the thing is. We're not going to worry about that at this moment. Okay, so I think I've straightened it up pretty good. I'm going to go back to my crop tool and as soon as I click on it, maybe it's going to be difficult today. Okay, today we're going to drag it. Um, let's see if we can get it perfectly square. Ha! Huh, it's still a little bit too far, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. And the reason I'm not going to worry about it too much is because the information on the painting in the bottom right hand corner um, is, is nothing that can't be lost. There's no uh, marks that I'm going to be changing. I'm not going to be changing the position of a line that could lead me off to the corner or anything. It doesn't affect the composition of the painting so I can I can lose a half an inch of the painting and it's not going to hurt. Um, I am a little bit high at the top here but I'm going to show you how to fix that. So I'm going to click OK. Now when you're looking at this on the screen you see a little bit of a shadow here at the top and a little bit of a shadow at the bottom. So I did not crop it perfectly. So I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to go in and drag it for cropping again. Now, if I tried to move this manually, it's really hard to get a very small amount, right? Um, you tend to either take off too much or you don't take off enough. So if you put your, your mouse at this thing right here at the top so that you get these little up and down arrows and on your keyboard, use the shift and the down arrow and that will move that the entire square down by one pixel. Then as you will see, because it's moved the entire square, there's a little bit of gray space down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna grab that and move it up and that'll snap to the perimeter because Photoshop snaps to the perimeter because Photoshop is smarter than you and I. Now, I still have a little bit of shadow down here at the bottom. It's distracting and it's unprofessional. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna drag it down and I'm going to, this time I'm going to put my little arrow at the bottom, shift. Now I'm going to use the up arrow and that brings the whole square up by one pixel. And then we can snap that back to the grid line. And there we go. It's as good as new. So now we have a perfectly cropped image. There is no distracting background. Now we want to make sure that it's square and the actual image of the painting. So, oh, Wait, no, I'm jumping ahead. I think what I'm going to do now um, is I have a tendency, I have a tendency, I do this. Um, you want your image to look as close to the original painting as you can. You're going to be using this image at some point to enter jury shows and you don't want to make it look better than your painting or worse than your painting. Uh, you want it to make it look exactly like the painting as you can. Um, my paintings depending on the lighting in the studio when I take the photograph, they're not always as bright and perky. Uh, we all want to be a little bit brighter and perkier than we really are. So I'm going to um, adjust my saturation. Now I don't always do this. I'm going to try and hit the saturation to three and see if that makes it too bright. Mm, yeah, that's a little bit too bright. I'm going to leave the saturation at zero because that was actually pretty accurate. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to go into enhance. Anytime you're changing your color or your lighting, you're going into the enhance um, menu at the top because you're enhancing the image. I'm going to go into lighting. There are two different kinds of lighting. There is levels, uh, which you can change different levels. You can make dark spots darker and change your midtones. This is actually pretty good. Um, this is where it was like this. So it's not too bad. 
or the other enhancement you can do, and that's this is the one that I usually end up doing um, when I'm saving my images, is just brightness. And all I want to do is just bring that up maybe, oops, let's try three. I find that three is a good number, probably because I'm used to the lighting in my studio and I know how it's going to, how my photography affects the image of the work. So uh, now we have our image. It's tweaked. The color is not tweaked, but the color is um, uh, accurate to the painting. Now I should point out something that I don't have to do, but back in Enhance, under this uh, hue and saturation, if you find that you have uh, different lighting in your studio, you can actually change the hue in your studio. So if you're painting, if your lights are a little bit warm or something, you can play around with that to get it accurate. Obviously you want to do it under the best lighting as you can. Um, I have two sets of indirect spotlights, uh, an east facing window, window and a north facing window. I'm pretty good with lighting. I don't take my photos at night. Um, I take them during the day. And uh, usually by 10 o'clock, I don't have any sun coming in the east window. It's up high enough or over far enough that I just get lots of nice um, light, but not direct sunlight. Where am I? Okay, so now we have this image done and it looks just like the original painting, we're hoping. Um, and now we want to make sure that it's the same size as the original painting. So up here in the menu on the left, I'm going to go to image, resize, and the image size. Don't pay any attention to the canvas size because that has, that's a Photoshop thing that you don't need to use and it will just confuse you. Even if your painting's on canvas, you're not going to play around with the Photoshop canvas size. So um, I have a way that I like to save my high resolution photos. Okay. Uh, everybody is different. You can save it as high as you want. And I've been finding lately that it's not as high as it should be. So I'm actually going to change that now and make it a little bit higher. Um, constrained proportions, what this term means is that when you adjust one side, the other side will adjust. So if you have a 48 by 60 inch painting or a 24 by 30 inch painting, when you say change one size, uh, the other side will carry on with it so that it will always be the same proportions as the original. Okay. So this painting is a square and it's 36 inches. So I'm going to do 36 by 36 and I do not have this, I'm going to, wait a minute, let me go back, let me cancel that so I can explain something a little bit more here. I'm going to go back to resize image size. You'll see how that my two, my width and my height are slightly different. That's because of the cropping and the tweaking that I did, but the painting is perfectly square. So I have unchecked constrained proportions and I'm going to make this the same dimensions as the actual painting, which is 36 by 36. Now, normally for my high resolution photos, I would save this at 150 DPI. Now, 300 DPI is print quality. 150 DPI at 36 inches is pretty good. Um, and it's going to make a pretty big image. So um, depending on the size of your image, you can do that. Or we can do 200. Let's do 200 and see what that happens. Because sometimes I find by the time I size them down enough um, for jury shows that they're not quite as big as I would like. So when we do this, you're going to see now that image is really big. So we can see some good brush strokes in there. I can actually see um, the marks from the gesso and the marks from the thick paint. You can see a good thick brush stroke right here. And this is something that jurors want to be able to see when you enter a jury dart show. Uh, so this is a fairly high resolution image. Okay. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to file save as, because I don't want to change my original photo. I always want those original photos in the camera file just in case something happens and I need to go in and change something. So uh, my high resolution file where I keep my stuff is called working artist slideshow. Don't worry about the title of it, that I've been calling it that for 20 years. And if I change it now, I will never find myself. Then I put down the title of the painting. And in order to figure out the title of the painting, I have to go onto my Instagram and look and see what I called the painting. <laughs> Cause that's just me. Um, did I call it anything? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Oh, this one is called Sheer Madness, um, titled by my good friend Diane Daigle. So Sheer Madness. Now you can see I already had it down here uh, because I've already done this, obviously. And I'm going to click Save. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to replace it because it was already there? Yes, I do want to replace it. And I want it as a large file because this is where I store my large files. It's taken a minute to save it because it's a big file. Okay, so now we've saved our large file. Okay, so now what we need to do is get this image uh, small enough to put on your um, on your website because you don't want anything really larger than 100 kilobytes on your website because that's anything bigger than that somebody might be able to uh, snap it or um, you know do bad things with it. So we're going to uh, resize this down small enough to put on your website. So this is a huge file. So first I need to go back into my image and resize the image size. So we need to get this back into a small enough file that we can downgrade it for the website. Now, the resolution on the web is 72 DPI. So I'm going to change that to standard 72 DPI. The size that I always pick, and this is where you can use your constrained proportions, the size that I always pick <clears throat> is 12 inches on my longest side. It's just something I do. I find it works. Okay, you can do whatever you want. You can figure out a good one. Um, if you have a something that's really long and thin or tall and thin, you may need to make it a bit bigger in order to get a good enough resolution for that um, small slice. Um, but I find that 12 works. So now it's really puny, 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 puny. <clears throat> so uh, now it's small. Now I'm going to go over here to file and we're going to save for web. And this is a trick that Photoshop does that automatically changes your photos for the website. So this is my original. Okay. It was a two megabytes. That's a big file. It's about the size I want to send to people. And the JPEG for um, web quality is 121 kilobytes. Now this is actually not too bad. I could use this as is, but I, that would defeat the purpose of showing you what I'm doing. So I try to get my um, images around 100. 100 kilobytes for my website. I find that's a good size. It's not too big. It's not too bad. The quality is pretty good and it's standard throughout. So uh, you want to pick JPEG up here um, and you want, you can either pick medium. Now let's watch what happens. When I go to maximum, it's big. You can see down here the size, 794, very high, 420. And this actually shows you how long it will take over 56 kilobytes, but I don't think anybody actually has the internet that slow anymore. Um, well, maybe they do. High is 256, still too big. Medium, 127, not too bad. Low uh, is 74, and that's too low. So when you, to find a happy medium, you can go into your quality here on your right, and you can slide this band, and if you watch the number at the bottom, down here, you can see it change as I slide it up. Okay, so I try to get around 100. There we go, there's 100. Um, you can also, and I can't remember how I did this, but you can set a preset. Um, so here's different things that you can set, JPEG medium, JPEG high, um, but I actually did a preset and I keep that to 100, and that's over here, optimized to file side, and you can set that at the file size that you want and it will get it as close as it can. It's not going to be perfect. See, look at that. It took that down to 80. That's not high enough. Um, I'm not going to have a good enough image for that. So I'm going to do this manually. Uh, where were we? We were at about 105. There we go. There's 108. That's pretty good. I'm going to save that. Then what happens is your files open uh, on your computer and um, I can go into my, um, my, my PC to get my documents, um, but I have already made up a file and I keep it in my quick access. Quick access is like shortcuts to the files that you use the most. So the file that I keep uh, my images for um, my web pro program, any images that I want to send off to galleries, because you don't want to send a gallery a high resolution image because it'll jam up their computer. Um, don't send any high resolution images unless somebody asks for them, 
Plus, you don't want to give somebody that you don't have a contract with access to your high resolution images. Um, my uh, folder is called slides. I just, I've been calling it that for years. So I'm going to save it to here. Now you can see how Photoshop has now put in the hyphen between the name. Okay, so sheer hyphen madness dot JPEG. It's JPEG quality. We only want the image uh, and that's your only suggestion. So the other thing that I do in here is I go in at the end of the title, just that with my mouse, put another hyphen in because we need that. And I put the size in 36 by 36. It's a 36 by 36 inch image. That way, when I uh, send these photos to somebody, the size of the painting is in there. I don't need to send that on a separate sheet of paper or anything. They have, uh, they have the, um, the title and the size. I don't need to put the medium in because I only work in oil. Um, if I had started working in another medium, then I would do that. Um, to do that, you just do oil. Okay. So but I'm going to take that out because I don't need that. And then you're going to save. I'm already in my slides folder here. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to replace it because I've already done this once. Okay, so now we have our high resolution image and we have the image that we can use to send to galleries, put on our website, um, not put on our website, sorry, to send to galleries, um, to send to anybody that might be of interest. It's a low resolution image. Now, um, if you want to, you can have another folder for images that you put on your website. And I'm going to show you uh, mine. So I have one that's called Web Gallery. This is every painting that has ever been on my website, including the old stuff that's no longer on it. I also have, as you can see from my screen, I have logos, um, tags from jury art shows, posters, anything that's ever been on my website is in this file. So in order to put this image on your website, it's the same size as it was before. We're going to do exactly the same thing save for web. Exactly the same thing, exactly the same size. We're going to save it again. Exactly the same thing. Only this time we're going to change our folder. So if I did this the long way, I would go into documents and then I would scroll down. I have a lot of folders. Scroll down and find my... Oh, it's not in here. Maybe it's in my photos. Is it? Okay, I'll use my quick access. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> uh, my web gallery. Okay, so and this is a trick that I learned from somebody else. Um, anything that's going on your website, in order to use the algorithms from um, Google to find your painting, because you want people to find your painting. You want them when they punch in sheer, your painting will come up. Punch in madness, your painting will come up. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to do 36 by 36. Then I'm going to do another hyphen and I'm going to do oil on panel, another hyphen and my name. Now you don't have to do all this. This is a lot of work for every image. Um, but the more information you have in the name of your painting, in the name of your image, the more chances you are that, that Google algorithms are going to pick you up. There we go. That image is done. We've done one painting. Uh, we can then close it. Do I want to save the changes? No, because I want this original image from that camera file to stay as it was. Now move on because I don't do the one painting at a time. I do them uh, when I have a bunch to do. So I'm opening my camera folder again and I'm going to do this one. I'm going to right click it open with Photoshop Elements and do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to do the, the selection tool over my thing, over my image, and I'm going to do the transform and the skew. Now there are different things. You, you don't have to use skew. I like skew um, because it works for me. Now I'm also going to show you that actually looks pretty good. I think I'm getting better at taking straight on photos. There is another filter that I'm going to show you um, in here. And this is in filter. And this one is correct camera distortion. Now, if you take 
Is it going to open? There we go. If you take um, an image of your, uh, if you take a photo of your painting up close, sometimes you can get your camera to look like this. It's a little, it almost looks like a bullseye. And this is what the camera distortion button does. It will straighten those curved edges so that you're not losing any. Because if your image looked like that, and you went to crop it out, you're going to lose a little bit of the top and the bottom and the sides, right? You want it to be perfectly square. You don't want it to look like this. You don't want it to look like that. You want it to look perfectly square. Okay. Um, if you couldn't uh, take, um, and there's perspective down here as well too, right? So um, if you couldn't take it dead on um, in your studio, like not everybody has the means to do that. Sometimes you forget to take it while it's on your easel and it's leaning on the floor, leaning on your car or something, then you can, you can adjust that. Um, and this will change the perspective as well. Let's see if we can make this a bit smaller so we can see it. So this changes the perspective as well. So you can adjust the perspective. There we go. See, and the idea is you want that to be perfectly at zero. Now, um, that perspective is almost the same as the skew button, but for my purposes, I find that it's not always perfect. One side is higher, one side is lower. So I prefer skew. I don't very often have to use the camera distortion button um, because I just don't need to. So uh, let's go into our next step now was the crop. So I'm just going to see how this looks. Let's see if we, how good our how good our judgment was for making a square image. The other thing that's important um, is when you're actually taking your photograph, make sure that your clamps on your easel are not hanging down over the front of the easel here because that will create a shadow. I actually, I work on panel and it's, it's an inch and a half deep. So I have these slammed down tight on top of my panel. Um, so it's not going anywhere and I don't leave it like that. As soon as it's done photographing, I put it back so it's secure. But these clamps are up and out of the way while I'm photographing so that they're not interfering uh, with, the, with the image at all. And I'm going to adjust that at the bottom. Let's see how we did. I think we actually did pretty good. I'm getting better at this. There we go. That's a pretty good image. Um, it's a little dull, so we're going to go into the enhance thing. Let's do the um, brightness. And sometimes that's all you need to do. You don't necessarily need to do um, the, the hue and saturation because sometimes the hue and saturation, sometimes just brightening it up a little bit, tweaks those colors and makes them shine a little bit more. Um, but let's see how this one looks if we were to play with this saturation. Uh, let's see how one looks. Now you can slide it, but it's more accurate to do one. There's one. That's actually not bad. There's two. And let's try one more. And there's three. So let's see if it's actually working. It's pretty subtle. Eh? Let's go to 10 and see how it looks. That's pretty bright. Um, so I kind of like three on this one. It's got some um, saturated colors in it. It's got some lovely reds and things that I want to show up. So I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before. Image, resize, image size. And I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to remove my constrained proportions. I'm going to put the size of the painting, which is, oops, 48 by 40 inches tall. That's the size of it. And I'm going to do it at 200 pixels per inch. Now this is going to be a big image. It's thinking, there we go. So, and I'm scrolling out to make it smaller, or you can go up here to the uh, size button. You'll also notice that I'm in the expert. I don't use the quick or the guided one. I'm in the expert um, section of Photoshop. So there we go. I have a high resolution image. Um, I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before. Save as. I'm going to go into my folder with my high resolution images. And I think this painting is called Where There's a Will. There's a way, right? So, and these, these trees are hanging over the edge here of, I think this is Puquaska National Park. So it's called where there's, and you'll see that it's already there because I've already done this, where there's a will, hit enter. Do I want to replace it? Sure. This one's a little bit higher resolution and I'm going to click okay. 
Then I would go through all the same steps that I did before. Um, I'm going to change the size again. I'm going to constrain my proportions now because it is a perfect 40 by 48. I'm going to go to that uh, 72 DPI. Oops. Image resize, image size. That was too fast. And I'm going to go to 12 inches on the long side, which makes it a 10 by 12. At 72 BPI, it's very small now. Then we're going to go into the same thing as before, save for web. Look at it's at 101. Pretty good. It's fine the way it is. If it wasn't, I could go up here and adjust things. So I'm going to click save. I'm going to go into my, now where it's already in your web gallery, so you can save that as you want to, but I'm going to, I like to do things in order so I don't screw up my names on them. And I'm going to call this one where there's a will hyphen 40 by 48. And I don't put any hyphen between the 40 by 48. That's going in slides. Save it. Oh, sorry. I didn't actually open the folder. Um, 40 by 48, and I should put in the right number. Delete, eight, there we go. Save, and I do want to replace it because I, as I've said before, I've already done this. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. Save for web. The size is good. I'm going to click save. This time I'm going to go into my web gallery. Uh, which is just another folder that I have. I, I know where everything is in my folders. So here's my web gallery where there's a will and 40 by 48 oil on panel hyphen Sheila Davis. Oops, let's do uh, hyphen Davis. Oops, let's spell correctly there. There, and that is now in my uh, web folder. So when I go to update my website, I know that the images that are in this web gallery folder are already optimized for my website. I don't have to worry about putting high resolution images on it or anything. Now, of course, the time comes when you go to put an image on the website and you realize that you haven't even, um, you haven't even photographed the website. Um, <laughs> so, and you have to enter that jury show in the next five minutes because it's, um, um, the due date's coming up. So that's when you have to pull out your camera and sit down and do everything pronto, pronto quickie. So I hope you've gotten something out of here. Um, you'll notice that I'm using the same steps over and over again. And after you do about 12 paintings, you will remember how to do this. Um, it's repetitive. It's, 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 it's repetitive. You won't need to, uh, look for help or anything, but you can do that as long as you need, um, to use this, uh, you can refer back to this, but pretty soon you won't have to. So there you go. Uh, now all those nice images that you've saved and are perfectly organized to store in your computer. So you know where your paintings are. You're going to put them into a folder. So you know when they were created, when you painted them and, uh, the size of them, the image of them and uh, on the panel, and um, then you're gonna put the location. And if they go into a gallery, you're gonna put them that they've gone into a gallery um, on this date. And the reason you do that is because when you send a painting a gallery, you want to know how where, where it is, obviously. I see so many times artists saying, I don't know where this painting is, and that's just bad organization. You should always know where your artwork is. Um, not doing so is very unprofessional. So, um, on your, if you're using a spreadsheet, that's fine. You're going to put that it went to that gallery and it went on September 1st. And the reason for that is because uh, you want to know where that painting is and you also want to know how long it's sitting there, right? You don't want artwork sitting in a gallery for two years, unless you don't want it back at your studio. Um, you want to move your artwork around so that it's fresh in each location. Then if that if that gallery sells your painting, you also want a date on your spreadsheet that tells you when that sold, either by seeing it sold on the website or by hopefully they have notified you that they have sold it because you're going to ask for that in your contract. Um, and then you're going to count the days to how long you get paid. And this is how you're going to keep track of how long it takes a gallery to pay you because they should pay you within 45 days. Um, your mortgage doesn't wait for 60 days to get paid or 90 days. You should be paid optimize 30 days within the sale of the painting. Um, but that doesn't always happen because they have a lot of artists to juggle and their end of books. So 45 days is acceptable. Anything a little bit longer than that is, 
it's getting a little iffy. I do have galleries that take a little bit longer than that, but I know when the money's coming, so I can allow for that. Um, but if I haven't heard from a gallery for a while, then I'm going to contact them. Quite often the painting has been sold on layaway and they just haven't told you. Um, I do wish galleries would tell you when a painting goes on layaway. That way you don't panic that they're not paying you um, and you can expect that. So uh, this is what you do to organize your artwork and keep your stuff together for your records. Bye. Uh, next time I'm going to do an image on how to tweak those photographs that you've taken uh, in order to paint from them, improve the composition, the color, the lighting, how to remove obnoxious uh, items from your image, and how to get that image perfect for painting so you don't have to think twice about it when you go to paint it. That's assuming you work from photographs. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Oh my God.